Woody Womack joined by Sam Spiegelman. Sam, <laughs> Sage Ryan, Rivals 100 DB, commits to LSU. We thought he was going to Alabama. He broke uh, all the predictions, uh, surprised a lot of people. What happened? Yeah, I got it wrong. I be- I'll be the first to admit it. I think I, I don't think any side could have been wrong trying to project where Sage was going to go because throughout the week, you know, it, it fluctuated so many different times and, and LSU ended up winning out, obviously. But uh, let's let's put it out there. He he made this, this decision weeks after giving a private commitment to Alabama, we believe. Um, he was able to go to Alabama for the Georgia game. And I think that kind of pushed the, uh, the momentum toward the tide. Uh, he, anna- he decided to announce on Saturday, which is obviously Nick Saban's birthday, at a time before Alabama's nighttime kickoff. Uh, to get that out of the way, obviously once he announced, LSU began making the push for him. Uh, this went back and forth. I know that he continued to say the right things of both sides, and ultimately it was LSU uh, pulling on those hometown heartstrings, I think, that pushed them over the top for, you know, arguably the best safety in the entire country. So you went up there yesterday to find out at one point we, we were prepped for Alabama <laughs> and you texted me, it's out here. It's LSU. And then we said, Oh no, it's Alabama. And up until the time he announced, I thought it was Alabama. Uh, we had everything prepped. So uh, you just think it was that last, that last minute push, huh? No. Well, I mean, Think about it, and, and you got to credit the, the people at Tiger Details, Jimmy uh, and Julie and Jared. They, they did some excellent reporting, and I think it was all completely spot on. Uh, once LSU kind of realized they were not in the driver's seat, they kind of went full throttle. Um, and listen, you know, they, they, they went through mom and, and the family and his, his coaches, his uncle Trevor, who was an All-American at, at LSU, and um, I think the big push is always for LSU is life after football. You know, Sage is probably a first round draft pick one day, but beyond that, you know, life in Louisiana and what, and what it means. And I think they pulled on those hard strings a good bit. Um, and, and really they kind of even the race where Sage, I think went into this wanting to go to Bama and then kind of at the same time was, didn't want to forget about you know, his childhood dreams of playing at LSU and, and life after football. Uh, so I know that LSU going Going into Friday, his game, I, I believe that LSU was was, hap- was very confident. And then there was a rumor that maybe he even committed to Alabama again before kickoff of his game and then kind of started swaying back toward LSU after the game when he got home and, and got on the phone with uh, Corey Raymond midnight last night. So who kn- I know that he was on the phone with Saban just a couple of minutes before he announced LSU, I think, spoke to him at least two times, we believe, on Saturday morning. This this had to come down to Sage and, and what his family meant, uh, wanted to do. And ultimately, LSU won out. How it happens, who, who really knows? So earlier in the week, uh, Ed Orgeron was asked about the safety play on his team. And he basically said, we're going to go get a guy or guys in recruiting that can play. And I mean, he was clearly referring to Sage, right? I mean, that was a, that was like a nice gamesmanship by him to try to get it done, right? He does this all the time. He's always done uh, really witty, uh, using the media to his advantage for this. Uh, I think it was, because uh, obviously, you know, I, I was on the LSU beat and they, they lost, a, I think it was to Mississippi State uh, on the road a couple of years ago. Uh, and the D-line play was, was, was bad. The O-line play was, was not up to snuff. And, and he went out and, you know, and then he signed uh, Damian Lewis from Juco, who ended up getting drafted by the Seahawks, and signed Cardell Thomas, the five-star from Baton Rouge, you know, who always was kind of looking elsewhere at different points in his recruitment. He's done this all the time. When they missed out on Pat Sertan to Alabama on National Signing Day a couple of years ago, the big-time lean, uh, you know, obviously born in Louisiana, uh, you know, then he goes and he basically starts recruiting Derek Stingley from that point on saying, we're going to get the number one corner in the, in the country the next year, who's obviously now they're starting sophomore corner. So he does this really well. He, Ed, Ed is, is he's, he's quicker than people give him credit for. And he's, he's a heck of a recruiter and you got to give Corey Raymond DB coach uh, from the Lafayette area, a lot of credit. He's also their recruiting coordinator now. And, uh, and obviously Kevin Falk, getting, you know, getting, this is the first time he's on, on staff as a running backs coach and he had to fight from behind. And he, he, listen, I, I was also told that Kevin was on the phone with Trevor 
you know, just a couple of minutes before that announcement. Who knows what he said there? Uh, obviously, it was enough for Sage to, you know, pull down and show uh, the LSU shirt. I know that I was tuned in completely unaware, um, but would not have been surprised either way. All right. So uh, for more, like Sam said, check out TigerDetails.com, our LSU site. And uh, we have all types of coverage of Sage Ryan's surprise, not surprise, surprise commitment to LSU. All right. Thanks, Sam. Yep.